Welcome to the Go Dyslexia podcast, where dyslexia experts share strategies, technology, products, stories, and more. And now, your host, author, and personal trainer for the brain, Dr. Erica Warren. This is the Go Dyslexia video podcast number two, titled Dyslexia, Making the Leap into Homeschooling with Marianne Sunderland. I am so excited to be featuring Marianne Sunderland on the Go Dyslexia podcast. Marianne is an author, blogger, and dyslexia advocate, but most importantly, she's a homeschooling mother of eight lively children ages 5 to 24, including adventurous and homeschooled sailors, Zach and Abby Sunderland, known for their world record setting around the world sailing campaigns. Because seven of her eight children are dyslexic, Marianne is passionate about educating and encouraging families not only to understand dyslexia, but also to discover and nurture their children's talents. Marianne's website, Homeschooling with Dyslexia, provides weekly articles on homeschooling kids with ADD, ADHD, and dyslexia. Hi, Marianne. It is so exciting to have you here at the Go Dyslexia podcast. And um, my first question for you is, why are you a dyslexia expert? It's kind of ironic that you would call me a dyslexia expert because growing up, um, I remember when we had the reading groups as kids in elementary school that there were different levels. And I, 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 so I guess I kind of knew there were kids that struggled with reading or who weren't as good at readers as others, but I really had no idea that dyslexia even existed until I was in my thirties, early thirties, when our son, our firstborn was seven and he was clearly very bright, but just was not able to crack the code of reading. It didn't matter what we did. It was like it leaked out his ears, you know, in the nighttime. And we finally had him tested at about seven and a half and got the dyslexia diagnosis. Uh, and this was back in 1996, 97. And, and so the internet wasn't what it is today. And there just really wasn't a lot of information readily available uh, like there is today. Um, and so, you know, he was dyslexic. A year or so later, we realized that his younger sister was dyslexic, and then the next one, and the next one. So, so I became a dyslexia expert by default, kind of, because I wanted to help my kids. And, um, you know, I could see how bright they were. I could see how the curious and full of life they were. But when it came to reading and sometimes writing and sometimes math, it was like they were different children. And so I just, um, just for, out of a love for my kids, you know, it started just reading books. You know, Sally Shaywitz um, was a, just a life changing book for me. I've read it so many times, you know, <laughs> it's all uh, dog eared and highlighted. Um, and then last year, I did, or a couple years ago, I did a training with um, Norton Gillingham training with Dyslexia Training Institute to become a certified Norton Gillingham tutor. Oh, terrific. Well, and, and now I, you said my first child, my second. How many children do you have? Well, we have eight kids. Uh, the oldest is uh, 24 and the youngest is five. And seven of them are dyslexic, whether mildly or moderately. We have one profoundly dyslexic son. He's 18 now, but yeah, it's dominant, <laughs> apparently. And my husband's dyslexic, ah. which, you know, I think so is that the, you know, I should have known though, because he always spelled my name wrong when we were dating. And I was like, that's weird, you know, but maybe it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. So, uh, you know, one of the things that you're really known for online, and I've been, I've been following you for quite a long time and really impressed with the content that you put out. Um, but I want to ask you, uh, why did you homeschool your children? Well, we, we initially homeschooled because we wanted to travel 
my husband is British and Australian and we sailed a lot. So we wanted to be, have the freedom to travel. We were living in Los Angeles at the time and the school options were either awful or outrageously expensive. So that was a factor. And so we started homeschooling. And when I think we had four kids and the oldest was about 10. And so they were 10, eight, I don't know, three and one or something. We took a three year sailing trip. And while we were gone, we rented our house out to some friends who had kids about our kids' ages. And interestingly, they went to the local public school yeah. where they also, they, they happened to have dyslexia as well. And wow. they had a very bad experience. Just, I mean, one of the worst I've ever heard of. Interestingly, because we live in a fairly, like the, you know, an, an neighborhood that's fairly educated, you know, it's not, it's not like we're in the inner city, but these teachers that these kids had really did, they just fell for all the myths about dyslexia. You're lazy, you're not trying hard enough. And so they would shame these kids into, um, oh. you know, trying to get them to work harder. And that we, and so, you know, we came back from our trip and we learned of that experience and cause I had been troubled during our trip you know, before we left, I was like, gosh, you know, Zach's not reading. We really should not be gallivanting around the world when our son can't read, you know? And so that's the, the, you know, worried mama in me, but, you know, bit by bit, um, you know, I learned that he did learn to read eventually. And he was a very good student after that. And his confidence was intact. This girl, these kids that rented our house out have a, you know, they're now in their 20s, a history of repeating grades, being um, in special ed classes, um, to being told to aim low, you know, just really not getting the help they needed year after year after year. And so honestly, sometimes I don't like homeschooling. Sometimes it's hard, you know, to get it all done and to do it well, even though I love the, the philosophy of homeschooling and the, the freedom of homeschooling. But what keeps me homeschooling is that I'm not putting my kids and my husband too. He said, I'd rather be homeless and live under a bridge than put my kids through what he went through you know, as a dyslexic boy in school in England where, you know, they don't have the child centered families like we do here. So kids got, you know, he got the slipper. Um, so it's been just something that, um, we've just committed to for the kids sake, not to put them in school. Do you, do you both actually take a part in the homeschooling? Uh, I do most of the academic stuff. My husband is, um, but he, he's the fun one, you know, he's the one who, they have a garden and, you know, the other day he was supposed to be getting chicks for my daughter to raise for the fair and came home with a lamb and the chicks. So, you know, and the kids are like, oh, we have a lamb, you know, and so, we, <laughs> you know, where I would have no pets if it were up to me. <laughs> you know? We'd probably do school on Saturdays too, but, you know, so he's the fun one um, He and he takes the kids to work with him sometimes. He travels quite a bit, so he'll take a kid here and there and um, but most of the academic stuff I do. Okay. Uh, wh what does he do? He is a shipwright. So in England, growing up in England at 16, you could choose whether you wanted to do an apprenticeship or do two more years of college prep, which is a beautiful idea, right? Because he hated school, struggled his whole time in school and said, Yes, I'll do an apprenticeship. And so li living on the coast of England, the southern coast, um, there's a lot of boat building industry down there. And so he got an apprenticeship as a boat builder and he sailed his whole life. You know, he had a dinghy before he had a bike because his dad, you know, just had them around and, you know, go, go, you know, go outside and play was not riding your bike. It was hopping in your dinghy and paddling around. So, um, yeah, so he did an apprenticeship as a shipwright and he's very entrepreneurial you know, which is a dyslexic strength. Yeah. So he's done very, mm -hmm. That's very cool. Um, and, and from your experience, what do you feel are the benefits to homeschooling? The, well, primarily the most profound benefit to homeschooling is just not being measured against the 80% of kids that learn well by traditional methods. You know, the day in and day out, feeling dumb, feeling behind, feeling anxious, um, so I would say that's the number one benefit. Uh, and then the number two is the freedom that we have. 
Um, you know, I have eight kids. I like to call it like a, a little bit of a genetics experiment. So I have the dreamers, you know, the ones that just really need some time to process and think and dream. And, you know, they're in and out of the school mode, you know, and they have the freedom to do that. Mm -hmm. I have one kid who's organized, you know, she probably do really well in school because she likes schedules and checklists and quiet. Um, but we have kids who are very active, you know, so they are the kids who we do a very short, intense lesson and they're outside for 20 minutes and then another short, intense lesson. And then they're building with Legos for an hour, you know, and it's, it's very, there's this freedom to customize your school, your teaching methods, your teaching curriculum. Um, you know, so, I mean, there's, you know, in the schools, if something's not working, you know, you got to kind of get in line, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's really, it's very difficult to affect change quickly. Whereas with homeschooling, you can say this really isn't working or you can modify it without getting, you know, permission, right? So you can read out loud to the kids or you can allow them if they're taking a test which we do very little of in the elementary years you could read it out loud to them right or you could make sure it's very quiet for them you don't need an IEP and a 504 and a therapist and a meeting you know you just do it and so there's a lot of freedom for both you know parents and the kids to customize the learning to to meet their learning style and also to customize the what they're learning you know our our kids have, because homeschooling is quick, it only takes, you know, a couple of hours, maybe three hours, maybe a little longer for high school, but they have a lot of time in the afternoons to pursue their interests. Mm -hmm. And so that has been a huge, huge benefit for our kids to really, our kids, we have four now that have graduated. When they graduate, they know what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what they like, what they don't like. They have a really good sense of where they're going. And, you know, I, I didn't have that growing up because I was so darn busy. You know, I was, I was at practice and I was going to school and I was doing homework and I, no one asked me what I liked to do, you know, I mean, on a much smaller scale, but there just wasn't the time, you know. Oh, let me ask you this. It's kind of a side question that I, a surprise question for you. Uh, how do you handle the curriculum? Because um, I guess there are certain guidelines that you have to follow. And how do you manage that, particularly with so many kids? Well, every state is a little bit different. Um, in the middle school and below, there are general standards for what you need to learn and different states. Some states will require annual testing or every other year testing. Some require, uh, you know, a, I don't know what they call them, like an educational mentor to check their progress, you know, make sure they're making progress. Um, but other than that, there's a lot of freedom in what you choose to use. Um, you know, if you're with a charter school, you're under the public school umbrella, you have to use their, what they approve. Um, but as an independent homeschooler, you can choose anything. And there's homeschool uh, conventions everywhere um, that have, you know, a place where you can shop around. And on my website, there's a lot of uh, recommendations for programs that that work well with all kids, but particularly with dyslexic kids, maybe they're, uh, they have an audio component or they have a hands-on component. So they're more dyslexia friendly. Awesome. That's, that's great. Thank you. And we, we talked about this question beforehand and I, I really like this because it, it's the wording is very interesting. What, what do you feel is the power of homeschooling? I think the power of homeschooling kind of goes hand in hand with the benefits of homeschooling because the, the benefits are that the kids, um, their self-confidence is intact. Um, and almost to the opposite degree, like as opposed to being crushed by their weaknesses, they are given time to pursue their strengths where their confidence that is it soars and their, their, um, competence in different areas also soars. And so for the power of homeschooling is really um, in that your kids are able to pursue the things that they maybe were even created to do, you know, like for example, our oldest son, 
Zach. He, he, um, you know, was always had his head in an audiobook, you know, and it was adventure stories all the time. And, and we read a lot out loud as well. Uh, but we had those years of sailing, you know, where we went to foreign countries and he learned to speak the language a little bit, you know, and he would, you know, uh, finagle or he he would barter, barter, bargain with, I guess you would say, with the guys on the beach and, you know, buy stuff from the vendors. And he just, mm. it was a really life-changing experience for him. And he would, you know, then go to work with my husband because when you're homeschooling teen boys, sometimes they just need to go to work with their dad. And so he would go to work with Florence and he would work on the boats and he would do yacht deliveries with him. And mm -hmm. when he was 16, he came to us and he said, you know, we had just watched a, a documentary on a round the world sailing race. And he said, you know, I could do that. I could sail around the world. You know, would you let me? And we were kind of like, I was not really expecting to hear that, but we'll think about it, you know. And and so that just that evening, as Lawrence and I were going to bed, I said, you know, it's as if he's been preparing for it his whole life, you know, with our sailing as a family, where he was comfortable in other countries and out of his comfort zone and, and very rough sort of circumstances, where he had worked with my husband fixing boats and learning about the ins and outs of boats and just reading about uh, circumnavigators and so forth. And so, um, you know, and then playing football, you know, being tough and, you know, working hard. And so, so we said, yeah, if you can pull it together, you know, we'll support you. And, and he had saved money from flipping boats. My husband would buy him get, or get given dinghies and he would polish them and paint them and, and varnish them and sell them on eBay. Awesome. You know, and he's had saved quite a bit of money. Yeah. So he was able to buy his boat we helped him fix it up, but he sailed around the world by himself. He was 16 when he left and he was 17 when he got back. And so my, my husband would fly out to ports, you know, some, oh, some of the ports just to check on him and check on the boat. But this is, would not have been possible if he had not been homeschooled. I don't think, you know, he, he really um, had a lot of time to pursue, to become somewhat of an expert, I guess you could say in the boating realm. So, um, there, there's a lot of power in that, in not being That's kept so busy. You know, I've been studying a lot recently about the, the classical model of education and how, you know, a lot of our education today seems to be more about preparing people to become workers, but the classical model is trying to prepare people to be thinkers and doers and um, servants and how how to create people who make a difference in the world just because it's the right thing to do as opposed to being create being taught to jump through hoops sit still fill in the blanks you know don't ask too many questions you know otherwise you get a bad grade and then you don't want a bad grade do you so you know, that's if I, I hope that makes sense, but that's kind of my sense of the power of homeschooling. Well, well and just, you know, for a, a kid that age to have the confidence to spend that right. much time alone says something incredible. What is he doing now? Oh, he's a yacht captain. So he has his captain's license and he, yeah, he, lo he loves adventure. He's starting to settle down more now, but it ha has been an issue of him not, you know, not having a girlfriend. Not he lives on his boat and he works in the marina, and then when he has money, he goes on an adventure, and then he comes back and he works on people's boats, and you know, he does a lot of long distance deliveries when people don't. Maybe they go to Hawaii, but they don't want to come back, so he'll bring their boats back, or you know, they buy a boat and have it shipped from the East Coast through Panama Canal. He'll go pick it up and bring it back. So. That, that's but he loves it. So cool. All right. Do you have any other examples of how your kids have kind of done these kind of non-traditional learning experiences? Um, let's see. Well, I mean, even as like, for an example, our oldest daughter, she was an animal lover always. And when we came back from our sailing trip, she was about 11. Was she 11 or 10? She was 10. Um, and she really wanted a bunny, right? So, and she was joined 4-H. And so we went to a breeder and saw her set up and we picked out this lovely little bunny. And she 
mom, mom, you know, I need two more bunnies because I want to breed them. And I was like, well, you know, let's just see how you do with this one. <laughs> Cause I knew how I took care of bunnies, you know, it was like, they were really cute for a few months and then you forgot about them. Right. But she loved that bunny and she read up on it and she was not a reader. She, she didn't really learn to read till she was about nine, maybe even 10. Um, and she, but she pushed herself to read because I didn't, I had all these little kids below her that needed my constant help. And so I didn't have time to read all of her library books on animals that she'd get. So she, she really pushed herself out of an interest rather than a, out of being shamed or embarrassed or stressed. It was more out of, I want to know this. And so she, she would take her a long time to get through a book, but she would read. So she went on to, um, get her, her trio, get her three bunnies and breed them and kept track of, you know, when they can, when they were born or when she conceived and when they you know, had the little box for her bunnies and she raised them and they were purebred. So she would sell them. And, um, then she started raising turkeys for the fair and winning grand champion because the girl would sit up there, you know, and comb, you know, she'd wash them and she'd feed them these seeds or something that were good for them. And she, she would sell, she would sell them at the auction and make this money, you know, and her goal was, or she'd always wanted a horse and it's funny because I always wanted a horse too. And my dad was like, you'll never own a horse, right? But my husband, when Abby said, I want a horse, my husband said, well, how would you pay for it? And so that got her thinking. And she came back a few days later and she was like, well, I saved this much from my bunnies and I saved this much from my turkeys and I have this much money and I did some research and I could afford to buy this kind of horse. And she went out and she bought a horse. And so these are the things like with homeschooling. When I was a kid, I wanted a horse and my parents sent me to horse camp, which was really fun. But see, do you see the difference? My, my daughter was like Huge. just kind of growing in it and living it. And, 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 and sometimes they'll start with an interest and they'll drop it, you know, like it's not that like she was also very much into drawing for a while. And then she kind of dropped that, that it, she was, that wasn't her thing, but you know, it's just the progression and the life lessons that they learn from doing that. You know, she also wanted to sail around the world. And so when my, her big brother came home, she was 16 and she said, well, I want to go, <laughs> you know? And I said, well, we're broke. So you're going to have to raise the money yourself. Right. And she was like, no problem. And we had a publicist that had worked with our family with Zach's campaign. And he offered to put a press release out saying that Zach's little sister wanted to go, but needed funding. And that, like the next day she had a sponsor and she was able to, you know, fund her trip. So just, you know, it's a different lifestyle, but there's a lot of freedom to individualize in ways that you, you know, who, I, if someone had asked me, you know, 20 years ago, if this was what my life would look like, I would not, not in a million years would I choose this or guess, you know, but yeah. it's, but, but what an incredible, incredible opportunity for a, you know, dyslexic learners. And, and you've, you've saved them from so much angst and pain and in fact, mm -hmm. created great excitement and growth. So it's, wow, those stories are just so inspiring. And, you know, I, I would love for you just to talk a little bit about your website because it is just such an amazing website. You have so many great ideas, resources. You're, you're so generous in sharing all of your, you know, ex you know, your experiences and what you like and advice with, with the public. And uh, can you tell people a little bit about your website and maybe some other things that you have going on? Yeah. Um, you know, I started a homeschooling blog, I don't know, back in 2011. And just because just my kids had blogs on their trips. And I had to uh, do a lot with them because they can't spell. And so they would either dictate <laughs> them to me or send these horribly spelled uh, emails to me and then I would correct them and post them. <laughs> and, uh, and the blogging community was really enjoyable. Like it was such a great community around their kids trips. And so when they were done with their trips and their blogs were kind of shut down, I, I thought I should do that, you know? And so anyway, I started blogging just about homeschooling. And then, uh, my posts about homeschooling kids with dyslexia were very popular. And I realized that there really wasn't anything like that out there. And, uh, 
So we decided to start a whole new site. So it's homeschoolingwithdyslexia.com. And the, the vision behind it or the heart behind it is to help parents not have to go through all the false starts, you know, the fits and starts of, of trying to figure it out from square one. You know, I'm trying to help parents to just not have to go through what we went through with trying all these things that were expensive and they didn't work and, and what really works. Um, but also understanding dyslexia because it affects so many areas of life. It's not just reading, it's spelling, organization, handwriting, sometimes attention. And so I created some classes for parents and it's just, it's kind of like, you know, from all the learning that I've done over the last 20 years, just consolidated into some succinct classes with some, you know, homeschooling or teaching at home kind of advice mixed into it so that they can see what it looks like, you know. Um, so hopefully that they are empowered to help their kids, whether they homeschool or not, you know, to advocate for them and, until they can become an advocate for themselves. Oh, that's terrific. I mean, you know, I think parents need hand-holding. They're, they're terrified. They're terrified of homeschooling. And I don't think it has to be nearly as scary as, as, yeah. as, as, as they think. But what would you speak to someone that said, I'm terrified. I don't think I can do it. What would you say? Well, you, you know, you take it one day at a time. Um, you know, a lot of kids come out of school with a lot of baggage, you know, and so just taking time to enjoy each other and repairing your relationship and it, maybe just reading or going to museums or, or zoos or, you know, going some, going to the beach, going to the tide pools, doing things, ign reigniting their love of learning um, or their natural curiosity and to just enjoy them. I mean, there's a lot of years to catch up. You know, they teach nouns and verbs, you know, every year, <laughs> you know, you don't need, to, you know, so I, I would say not to stress about it. You know, it's good to find a good curriculum fit. And then, you know, there's just tons of advice on my site about expectations and reality, you know, of what it, what it means to homeschool. But what I find is I love my, my readers because they are the most creative um, parents. You know, they know their kids really well and they know what works and what doesn't. And you'll figure that out too. You know, and so one of the things I hear a lot is from parents who have dyslexia and they say, oh, I couldn't possibly teach because I'm dyslexic. And I say, you know, you're the best teacher. Because I would say to my husband, oh, we're going to do this thing and these lap book things. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. You don't even waste your time. You know, he's like, they will not enjoy that. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay. That's awesome. And he's, he really has, like, he would say to me, it doesn't matter if they're reading Frog and Toad and, you know, fifth grade, if that's what they can read, they need to be reading every day. And so that's something that we have done throughout the years. He said, it's just really a lot of practice. That's what did it for him or it's how he learned to read. So people with dyslexia actually have a lot more insight into dyslexia than, you know, the parents who don't. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's wonderful advice. And um, you had mentioned that you have a free ebook that is available. Can you tell people a little bit about that? And uh, we will definitely be putting a link underneath the uh, the video to to share with people. Um, and on iTunes, where we 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 will also put some information there too, where how the, and how they can get it. So tell us. Well, it's uh, I get asked oftentimes, you know, how do I get started? What do homeschooling my kids with dyslexia? What are the legalities? Uh, how do I start? What do I? What curriculum do I buy? How do I teach? Um, you know, what? How do I set a schedule? How do I get things done? And so I r gathered up all that information and put it into an ebook that can be downloaded and just. You, it's just a really useful resource. It's free. Um, so they can go to my website. We'll put a link up to the, to where to get it, but it's just a guide for parents to walk them through what they need to know to get started. Oh, it's awesome. And, uh, yeah. And yeah, I want to encourage everybody to follow you, you know? Um, and so you have a blog. Are you also on Facebook? I am. Uh, Homeschooling with Dyslexia is a very happening uh, page. There's a, I post a lot of research, a lot of interesting articles, and um, parents can come on and you know ask questions, and and you know fifty people will answer. You know, wow. this is what I what I used. You know, so 
it's a it's a really uh, nice place for parents to come to get to ask questions from people who who are where they are. You know, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, are you uh, anywhere else on social media? Um, yeah, I'm on Twitter, but I don't use it very much. Um, Google Plus and Pinterest, and the links are all on my site. All right. Well, terrific. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on to, uh, onto the podcast. And I think that you've just shared some incredible inspiration, the stories about your children, you know, the, the things that you've done, your generosity and sharing your experience, um, and your, the tools and your advice, all of that is, is really just it's, it's golden. So, you know, I thank you so much. And, and again, thank you so much for being a part of this. And um, I, I want to encourage people to answer or to, to ask you some, any burning questions that, uh, that might be there for um, Marilyn, because I would like to feature her back again on, on the Go Dyslexia podcast. So if you have any specific questions, please let us know. And uh, perhaps, or just go on over to uh, her site, and I'm sure she can help you there as well. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Go Dyslexia podcast, where dyslexia experts share strategies, technology, products, stories, and more. If you need the show notes or want to check out the webinars, blog posts, and resources, go to GoDyslexia.com. Be sure to sign up for Dr. Warren's newsletter and follower on social media.